Hi folks, welcome to lesson four on probability. There's one handout to fill in on this which has two pages. And we start by looking at mutually exclusive events. These are events uh, that have no outcomes in common. So for example, if you roll a dice, you can't get an even number and get a three. So those events are deemed mutually exclusive. Now look at this Venn diagram. There's no overlap between the two events. Okay, and hopefully that makes sense to you because you can't have both of them occurring. So the addition rule, You've covered this in previous lessons, and we're just writing down the basic form of the addition rule that you already know. But if we consider the value of A into section B for mutually exclusive events, well, look, they don't overlap. There's no overlap, so A into section B is zero, which means the last part of that formula is no longer there. So for mutually exclusive events, the union of A and B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now let's use that in an example. Um, so we've got two events that are mutually exclusive and we know the probabilities of each of them. What's the probability of the union? Well, we're going to use the fact that we've just written down. Okay, they're mutually exclusive, so we can say that it must be the probability of A plus the probability of B. So we'll simply add those together. So far, so easy. Part B, the probability of A intersection not B. <clears throat> well, we'll see that it's going to be helpful just to consider the Venn diagram. Does this make sense to you? There's two circles, they don't overlap, so the only other region to shade in or to fill in is the outer region of 0.4. So if we want the intersection of A with not B, well, look at the region of the diagram which is in A but not in B. That's the whole of A. Okay, if you can't see that, just pause and rewind until it becomes clear. Um, and therefore, it's just 0.2. Part C, the intersection of not A with not B. Okay, this is the region where A doesn't occur and also B doesn't occur. So if we consider the diagram, this is just the region outside of both circles, just 0.4. So for our reasoning, our working, we can just write from Venn diagram. Now part D, the union of not A and not B. This is the region where either A doesn't occur, or B doesn't occur, or neither of them occur. Okay, take some time and just convince yourself that that is the whole of the sample space. And if you're not sure, consider each region separately, and that should help. Now, independent events are events which do not influence the likelihood of one another. So rolling a six on a die doesn't influence the likelihood of also getting a head when you toss a coin. Equally, if you toss the same coin twice, getting a head the first time doesn't affect the likelihood of getting a tail the second time. Now, when you can see these on a Venn diagram, they do overlap, and this will become clear hopefully in a minute. Um, so. Let's just consider the probability of A given B. Well, it's just equal to the probability of A because the given B thing doesn't matter. We've just said that event B doesn't influence the likelihood of event A. So the probability of A given B is just the probability of A. But the multiplication rule, which you, we have already covered, includes the probability of A given B. So specifically for independent events, we can replace this part of it a given B simply with the probability of A. And that shows us that we can multiply the two probabilities together for independent events and get the probability of the intersection. Uh, the extension task, bit of a joke, unsmiley face. Right, so an example where we've got two events, A and B, they are independent and we know their two probabilities. So first of all, part A, the probability of the intersection. This is a straightforward application of what we've just written down. Uh, the multiplication rule, um, probability of A times the probability of B, since they're independent. So we multiply those probabilities together and get 1 15th for the intersection. Now, as ever, when you've worked out the intersection, this enables you to draw a Venn diagram. This will prove useful in a minute. So we draw a Venn diagram, and straight away we can put 1 15th for the intersection. <clears throat> the other bits we work out by subtraction, so subtract 1 15th from 1 3rd, you get 4 15ths 
and subtract 1 15th from 1 5th for B and you get 2 15th and subtract all of that from 1 and we're left with 8 15th. So now we have a complete Venn diagram. Let's see how useful this might prove. So for part B, the probability of A intersection not B. Uh, this is the region where we are in the loop for A but not in the event the loop for B. And you can see that's the region labeled four fifths in the Venn diagram. So very helpful, the Venn diagram. But we're asked to do it two ways. So let's consider the alternative method. Um, so, and that's to consider that if A and B are independent events, then the events A and not B will also be independent. So we can apply the same formula to A and not B. So if you want the intersection of A with not B, we can just multiply the probability of A by the probability of not B. And uh, A we already know, and not B is just 4 fifths, because the probability of B is 1 fifth. Multiply them together. Thankfully, we get the same answer that we just got. Part C then, the intersection of not B with not A. That is the region of the diagram where A does not occur and B does not occur either. Okay, so clearly that's the 8 15th region around the outside. Now you might suspect what's coming here. If A and B are independent events, then not A and not B are also independent events. So we can apply the same rule to these. So the probability of the intersection of not A with not B is simply the probability of not A times the probability of not B. And both these can be obtained from the facts at the top. Not A is 2 thirds, not B is 4 fifths. Multiplies those together, thankfully we get the same answer that we just got. Right, last example. Uh, we have a red die and a blue die which are rolled, um, assuming they're fair die, so we get answers 1 to 6, and we can put these in a sample space. I've got X's there because the events are different things. Some of them are to do with what they add up to, some of them are to do with uh, the answers, the values being equal. But now event A is the outcome on the red die is a 3. So can you see that I've circled all the ones where we get a 3 on the red die? And for event B, that's the ones that I've just circled there, it's a 3 on the blue die. Now what it, what it wants us to do for part A is to show that they are independent, A and B. So if we consider the probability of A, from the sample space there are six crosses that correspond to event A uh, out of 36, so that's one sixth. And for B, that's the vertical region there, there are six crosses there for the blue die out of 36. So for each one the probability is one sixth. But now if we also consider from the Venn diagram sorry, from the sample space, um, the probability of A intersection B. Well, there's only one cross in the middle bit where they overlap, so 1 out of 36 is the probability there. Now, the reason for doing this is to show that the probability of A times the probability of B is equal to the probability of the intersection of A and B, because this is a property that is only true for independent events. And we've shown that here. Um, and so any time that you can prove that, uh, you can say that your two events are independent. Now for part B, uh, we're considering two events which we want to show are mutually exclusive. Um, now event C is the event that the outcomes add up to 5. So that's 4 and 1 and 3 and 2. Um, and you can see that I've labelled those four outcomes there. Event D is that the outcomes on the two die dice are the same and that's six outcomes there that I've labelled. And the key thing here is that you can see that C and D have no common outcomes. Okay, They overlap but there's nothing in there. There's no outcomes in that overlapping region, that's just where they pass each other. Um, and if there's an overlap then we can say that they are mutually exclusive. Um, we could also say at this point that the intersection of C and D is equal to zero. And sadly, that brings us to the end of this lesson, which means I gotta go. But I will see you next time.